Welcome back boys and girls and I am sure you're excited as I am the honey season is right around the corner and today I want to talk about everything that you need to know for hunting whitetail because I know you don't have time to go through all the hunting 101 so let's just summarize everything on this video and hopefully you could score this year don't forget to spray all your hunting outfits with a tick repellent and sand killer you should also shower night before the hunt or the morning of the hunt you should also download free hunting app that way you don't get lost in the woods. It will show your hunting ground, property lines, where your tree stand is, where your camera is, and where you last saw the a deer or even mark a blood trail. So this could do a lot for you and you will never get lost in the woods. And the best part is you could also trace your way to the certain location. So if you're going on hunting on a public land or private land, and if you see a nice spot, you could actually trace your steps and you can always go back to the exact location, even in the dark. 72 hour weather and five day weather as well. And one of my favorite information is the uh, lunar calendar. You go into that, it will give you from Monday to Friday, or next five day of what the lunar calendar is and when the major game movement is. And this really worked well for me. And this also has a whole bunch of other information which I don't use. First of all, don't miss your first day of the hunt. In most cases, hunting whitetail does not require long distance shooting. And especially in Virginia, where we hunt, the hunt distance is usually under 100 yards. They're mostly under 100 yards. And sometimes, actually many times, under 30, 40 yards. So, from now on, practice shooting at power 5 on your scope and zero in at 50 yards. That way, you're good from 25 to 200 yards. And the reason I said power 5, is that especially young hunters or new hunters, they go out there, they see a deer, but they can't find it with their scope. So when you have it in power five, it gives you a much wider view, so it'd be a lot easier to find. And it's still not easy. And you need to practice finding a target with your scope. So sitting in your backyard, make sure your gun is empty. If you can, remove the bolt so you know it's completely safe. Find the target with your naked eye, get your scope on, and find it and practice till it becomes your second nature. Also, you need to practice shooting with your left shoulder because many times you're gonna see deer come out on your right side and trying to twist your body from the shoulder with your right shoulder, it just becomes almost impossible or you make a lot of movements and they bust you and they run. So practice shouldering your right foot on your left shoulder and practice shooting until you're pretty confident. Oh man, I had to shoot it with my left hand because she came out, she came out from my right side, and that's about 85 yards. You can see the shop placements right there. That's where I was aiming for, and she dropped like a rock. And you must practice shooting with your hunting ammunition. You should pre-scout the land at least one week prior to the hunting day. That way, you could go out there, set up a camera, clear the path. Check your tree stand, make sure everything is nice and tight because your life can depend on it. It's also best to have a trailer cargo where you could transport the deer on. You do not want to have your deer coming into any part of the car. They have ticks. And this is how we transport the deer. We cover it with tarp so that people won't see it and get offended. Now, I would never let deer inside of my car because they have ticks and ticks have Lyme disease. You want to be at your hunting spot at least one hour before the sunrise or 30 minutes prior to the legal shooting hours and get ready for the magic time. Now, most common accidents during the hunting is climbing up the tree stand and climbing down the tree stand. So you want to make sure you are very cautious about the whole process and kind of think through it. So, you know, think about having your backpack on your back, going up there, get the backpack down first, hang it on the tree if possible, and have your gun sitting on the bench or hanging on the tree if you have the hanger on it. I do. <laughs> and then get yourself into the position, 
put the armrest down. As soon as you're ready, get your gun ready. And then you want to chamber your gun because you don't want to have this going off when the deers are there. So you want to chamber your gun and then put it on the safety. And usually what I like to do is I like to have my gun resting on the shooting race. I don't like to have my gun sitting on you know, across me like this or have it on my lap. Because sometimes when you see deer coming in, even this movement is too much movement. They're going to catch you and they're going to run. So when you have your gun already on the rest, this is so much easier to go behind it. And you have a lot less chance of getting busted, so you can score. It is now 5.15 and we are ready to hunt. Now when you open your tree stand or your hunting spot, there's always a spot that you think the deer are going to come out. So you're thinking like, oh, that's a perfect spot. So you're focusing on that. Meanwhile, you have deer passing right beneath you or behind you. So you really need to look every direction. Another thing is when you're looking into different directions, you don't want to move too fast because as I you know, mentioned, they're very sensitive to movement. And sometimes when you move, they will stop. And if they're not moving, you might not catch them. So practice moving really slow and in each section, practice to watch at least three seconds. So that way you're moving really slow and you're watching. And believe me, it is so much easier to see the deers moving. You have to remember your gun is on safety. So when you see a deer come out, the first thing that I do is when I have my gun up, first thing I do is I release the safety. And when the time is right, I just pull the trigger. I know it's safe to release the safety right before you pull the trigger, but many times as a beginner, there's a good chance you might forget. And when you pull the trigger and you go, what, what? And then deer takes off. Also, when you're sitting in your tree stand, you need to familiarize yourself with the woods different kind of trees, rocks, any kind of landmark. So when the deer actually shows up, you know exactly where it was. And when you shoot it, usually when you shoot it, you shoot deer running, you're busy watching the deer running. And then you realize you forgot where you shot it and you can't find the bullet trail. In that case, you might never find the deer. So when you don't exactly know where the deer is, you could go back to the first spot that you shot and then find the blood trail and then track the deer. Also, before you come down from your tree stand, make sure you know where you shot the deer and look, look for the landmarks, like different kind of tree that splits or a rock or fallen log, whatever. Because when you come down from the tree stand, everything changes and you might never find the spot that you shot the deer. So as you come down the tree stand, look back, keep looking at the spot where you shot the deer and find the landmark and then you'll be able to find the blood trail. As you come down the tree stand, you have to make sure you know where that deer is laid so that you don't get confused once you come down from the tree. So. I remember seeing this big tree here and then they actually lined up with a tree that's got some box peeled off. See that right there? The box peeled off right there. So that's what I was looking at. And the deer should be, yep, there it is. It's right there. Yeah, it's a, it's a good size deer. I'm just hoping it's a doe. Wow, that's a big size doe. Now, when the hunt is over and before you come down the tree stand, first thing you should think about is unloading your gun. That's very, very important. As I mentioned, climbing down the tree stand with a loaded gun can be very dangerous. And if I'm hunting all day, I'll usually sit here at 10 a.m. And if I don't see anything, I'll just get out of the woods, get back to my car, have a lunch, take a little nap and rest and go back out around 2 or 3 o'clock, get ready for the evening hunt. Now, if you sit in the tree stand all day, they'd be great. But a lot of times you start losing focus and you start falling asleep on the tree stand and it doesn't really help you. So you need to be focused when the deers are there. So when the deers are not out there about walking around, you don't need to be in the woods. You better, it's better for you to get rest. And so when you go back out, you can stay focused. And when the time comes, you can find it and pull the trigger. 
You also need to know how to field dress a deer or be with somebody who knows how to field dress a deer and have a proper equipment to do it. This is what I carry, a foldable nice hunting knife with a serrated blade so I could actually open up the ribs with this and a, a gut hook. All right, that's a dandy size bell. I didn't cover everything on my hunting 101, but I just covered stuff that you need to know for the hunting day. And lastly, like always, thank God for what you have in your life with what you got, but mostly God bless your season.